just a couple more spruce logs and I can finish my house. Tori said as she looked through a chest beside her bed. She had been working on her house for a couple of days now, and it was almost complete. At the moment, she had four oak plank walls and wooden door, but Tori wanted the darker spruce wood for the roof. Tori was quite the adventurer. She had just started her journey out in the wild and wanted to prove to her friends and family back at the village that she had what it takes to be the best adventurer in the world. Her house was on a little hill in the plains, overlooking a little stream and an oak forest behind. There were flowers scattered around the house, and if you listened closely, you could hear the bees in the lone tree by door. There was a small wheat field Tori had planted beside the stream. She had big plans for a farm in the future, but this would have to do for now. In the distance, you could see a mountain and spruce forest, which was quite far away to get there, but Tori was confident that she had enough supplies to get there and back safely. As Tori went through her small chest of belongings, she grabbed her leather tunic, iron axe, some torches, and plenty of bread. She didn't think that it would take too long to go get some spruce logs. Once she collected her things, Tori set out towards the spruce forest in the distance, confidently wielding her trusty axe. It took most of the day to get across the plains. There were herds of horses and cows chilling, enjoying the nice weather. I hope I can find a saddle someday so I can have my own horse, Tori thought to herself as she walked by. It was the middle of the afternoon once she arrived at the forest, and Tori quickly started her work taking down the trees. Tori continued to work and collected many stacks of logs, but the day was starting to get away from her. She had not been paying attention, and the sun started to set. Eventually, Tori heard a lone moaning noise behind her as she was chopping down a tree. She froze, she knew what this sound was. As the noise drew closer Tori quickly spun around and cut the zombie in half with her axe. But as she sliced through the undead menace, her trusty axe broke. Oh no! Tori exclaimed, she had cut too many trees down and her axe was broken. Tori knew what to do, she quickly made some planks and a crafting table before any more monsters appeared. After she had that set up, she made a wooden sword. This will have to do for now, Tori sighed. Holding her sword in hand she looked around. It was starting to get dark around her. She knew that she needed to get home, but wasn't sure if she would make it. Looking towards the mountain, she noticed a small light. Tori ran as fast as she could towards the mountain and away from her house. Hopefully that's shelter, I can stay there tonight, Tori hoped. The longer she ran the more noises she heard. She could hear bones knocking together from skeletons and more groans from zombies. As she got closer she saw that it was a little cave. Tori jumped through the entrance as an arrow flew right past her head. She quickly blocked the two-by-two -two entrance with some of the logs she collected and sighed with relief. After she had caught her breath Tori looked around the cave, it was not a big cave, but there was a small campfire near the back, the walls were all stone, this place must have been made in a hurry. But as her eyes were examining the corner she heard a very distinct, Tori's eyes widened, in the far corner of the cave was a little creeper. His face looked scared, or as scared as one of them can look. Every time the little guy tried to step closer to Tori, he emitted the and scurried backward. He was scared and stuck at the back of the cave. Tori was confused. All the other creepers she had seen were never afraid to get close and attack, but this one was different. Hello? Tori called out nervously to the green fella. She tried stepping closer to get a better look, but the creeper started hissing and shaking his head frantically. Tori jumped back to her corner. She didn't want to hurt this creeper, there was something different about him. She pressed herself into her corner as far as she could from him. Hi, my name is Tori, what's yours? Tori asked. The creeper just looked at her confused, nobody had ever asked him before. <laughs> Morris, my name's Morris, the creeper replied with a distinct lispy hiss. Why aren't you trying to kill me? Tori was shocked, she didn't actually expect the creature to respond. Well, why aren't you trying to explode me? Tori remarked back. Morris thought for a minute and explained, I never really wanted to explode. All the other creepers always talked about how excited they were to do it. But I never really thought that was the best way to live life. I always wanted to meet a human, but every time I get close to someone, they run away and I start to hiss. I can't help it. This saddened Tori. She knew what it was like to want friends. She loved being an adventurer, but it got lonely at times. I'll be your friend, Morris. You seem like a decent guy. We just have to be far apart. Morris's eyes fell, he knew that would be a problem. They would never really be able to get along as long as he would explode whenever they got close to each other. It's okay, Tori. 
You don't have to. I might be too much of a burden. Tori was troubled. She wanted to help Morris. Obviously, he was hurting and wanted a friend. They sat in silence for the rest of the night as the campfire glowed between them. The sound of monsters outside continued throughout the night, and Tori fell asleep. In the morning, Morris was still stuck in his corner when Tori woke up. She stretched and knew she needed to get home to get some food. Good morning, Maurice. I need to go home and get some food, but I'll come back for you. Morris's eyes brightened. Really? You promise? No one has ever done that for me before. Of course, Tori said as she took the logs down and let the morning sun in the cave. I just need to think of a plan and I'll be back in a couple of days. Tori was walking through the spruce forest trying to remember which way was out and towards the plains where her house was. She was worried that she would get lost. As she walked around some trees, she saw a little hut in the middle of a clearing in the forest. Great, thought Tori. Maybe the people there could show me the way home. As she approached, she heard a high-pitched laughing. <laughs> what brings you here, little girl? Screamed an old witch as she burst out of her cabin. Tori was frightened, her axe was gone, and all she had was a wooden sword and some bread, but she was confident in her abilities with the sword. Quickly she got into a fighting stance and was ready. The witch threw a potion at Tori, but she rolled away in the nick of time. Tori lunged forward with the sword, piercing the witch in the heart. Tori cleaned off her sword and decided to look through the witch's hut. There was a book on a table titled, How to Stop a Creeper. Intrigued, Tori looked inside the book. There were sections on different was to sneak up on creepers, attack or farm them. But the last section caught her eye. It was called, Befriending Creepers. Tori exclaimed as she examined the chapter. The book described a necklace that could be crafted to stop creepers from exploding. The crafting recipe was a diamond surrounded by four gold ingots. I need to find a diamond, Tori shouted. She grabbed the book and ran out of the house. Tori continued running through the forest. After an hour, Tori finally found the edge of the forest, she still had most of the day left and she ran home. Tori was out of bread and was exhausted by the time she got there. The sun was setting and Tori just needed some sleep. She put some beef in the furnace and crawled into bed and dreamt of Morris and was excited to make a new friend. In the morning, she had just enough iron to make a pickaxe. Then, after grabbing the stake she made the night before, she set out to do some mining. Tori was so excited that she forgot the first rule about mining, never dig straight down. This was her mistake. Tori went outside and dug straight down and thought for sure she would find a diamond eventually. She dug for hours and hours. She ate most of her steak, found some iron, and even some gold along the way. But she could not find any diamonds. Then, after breaking a piece of andesite, Tori felt the ground beneath her give way and she fell. She had dug into a huge cave. She was falling and falling and screaming and scared. Splash! Tori was so relieved to fall into the water that could have been a fatal fall. She looked around at her surroundings. It seemed like a strange place, she had never seen a cave like this before. But then she realized what this was, the deep dark. Tori was scared, she had heard about this place but had never seen it before. There were rumors of an ancient monster down here so powerful that even with full netherite armor you would not be safe. But then, Tori kicked over some loose stones that made a sound. She froze, but then her vision went dark. A voice that sounded like thunder rang around her. Why do you disturb my sanctuary? Tori was scared, shaking, and didn't know what to do. She squeamishly said, My name is Tori. I am looking for a diamond so I can have a friend. A diamond to make a friend? What kind of friend needs a diamond? Maurice, my creeper friend. I need it to make a necklace that stops creepers from exploding. Tori whispered, scared to say anything too loud. After a second, the darkness started to lift, and Tori could see a tall bluish green monster with two big horns and a gaping mouth in front of her. I am the one. I have never heard of someone trying to make a creeper their friend. This is quite the noble cause for a diamond. Tori started to have hope that she might survive this ordeal. She stood straight and tall before the warden and said, Yes, Maurice is my friend, and I promised that I would return with a way to be close together and be friends. I found a book in a witch's hut that told me of a diamond necklace that can stop creepers from exploding. Ah, I too have heard of this necklace. I'll give you one of my diamonds to help you in this quest of friendship. Really? 
shouted Tori with joy. Thank you so much, Mr. Warden, sir. The warden reached behind his back and grabbed a diamond from a pocket somewhere. Here you go, Tori. I hope this helps you both get together. Tori was so excited to receive this gift. She smiled and thanked the warden over and over again. But then, Tori had a problem. How was she going to get back to the surface? Warden, do you know how to get back to the surface? The warden thought for a minute and had an idea. Why, yes, I do have a way. Come with me. This is a portal. I can activate it. When you step through it, you will be teleported back to your bedroom. Thank you so much, warden. Tori went and stepped through the portal and instantly fell into her bed. Whoa, thought Tori, that was crazy. But then, she remembered Mori's and quickly smelted the gold ore that she had found and put the gold ingots with the diamond on the crafting table to make the special necklace. There we go, now I need to find Maurice. Tori looked outside and saw that the sun was just rising, she had been underground all night. Tori didn't even check for supplies, she ran outside straight for the spruce forest with a giant smile on her face. She couldn't wait to see Morris. Tori ran all day, not stopping for anything. Once she got to the entrance of the cave, she heard a sound. Tori, you came back. He was so excited to see Tori. It had been a couple of days since she came to the cave last. Tori was panting. She needed to catch her breath from the long run she just had. Morris asked, Did you find a way for us to be together? As he backed up slowly so he didn't accidentally explode. After Tori caught her breath, she looked up and smiled at Morris and held up the diamond necklace. As she walked closer to him, it started to glow. Morris was scared at first, he didn't know what was going to happen. But as Tori got closer, Morris noticed that he didn't feel like exploding. This is a special necklace that prevents you from exploding, explained Tori. And she put it around his neck. The two were united at long last. Let's get out of this cave, you can stay at my house. Tori said as they walked outside. As they walked through the plains, Tori grabbed some wool with a pair of shears. What is that for? You'll see Tori teased. They arrived at the house late in the evening, and Tori used the wool she just got to make a second bed and placed it in the house. You see, Maurice, this is our house now, and here is a place for you to sleep. Morris was so happy, he had never had his own bed before. Get some sleep, we have lots of adventures waiting for us. But tomorrow, I need some help building my floor. 